But in the end, no matter where you are, no matter what's hurting, no matter what difficulty, no matter what, he's saying, I haven't abandoned you, I'm here. There's a type of shame, difficulty, pain, sorrow that'll lead you straight into doubt, straight into anger, straight into bitterness, straight into unforgiveness, straight into forget God and his plan to relieve me of my infection. I'd rather die my way. But then there's a type. Then there's a type, there's this choice to walk in something different. Let me show you that and we'll, we'll get out of here. Let's go, Luke 7. Almost done. We'll pick it up in verse 36. This is honestly probably my second or third favorite story in the Bible. Definitely one that haunts me. Picking it up in verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. So um, don't think uh, the Da Vinci long rectangular table, everyone facing the camera, all right? Um, Think kind of round table on the floor lounging. Um, Probably talking about the Torah, honestly, verse 37. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, let's chat, Um, sinner in this text is not like you and I would use the word sinner. You and I would use the word sinner as, oh, we've all sinned, everybody's a sinner, everybody needs the Lord. Sinner in the first century would have been a class of people marked by either some kind of physical deformity or some job of ill repute. So this woman is either deformed, blind, leprosy, or um, she's a prostitute. Now, um, the reason I think she's a prostitute and with confidence say, say she is in this text is because it also calls her a woman of the city. And if you would have been, had a deformity or a disease, you would have had to live on the outskirts of the city and come in during the day to beg, but then leave. You weren't allowed to stay in the city. So a woman of the city who was a sinner, we've got ourselves a prostitute here. Here we go. A woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment and standing behind him at his feet. I think that's significant. Weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now watch this. I love this. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to, who did he say this to? Himself, right? He said it to himself. If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Look at verse 40. And Jesus answering him. (laughs) I love it. I mean, this guy is saying to himself, if this man were a prophet, and Jesus is like, I'd be in your head right now because that's where I am. Let me answer your question, all right? I have prayed for that gift. I have not got it, but I have asked for it fervently fervently ask for it. Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Now, look at this. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon. So watch this. Right, because I think all of this is really kind of complex but beautiful. He's at a round table sitting with men. The woman is behind him washing his feet with her tears and hair. And Jesus turns around, looks at the woman, but starts talking to Simon. Watch what happens. Do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this that even forgives sins? Notice that Jesus doesn't get involved in the conversation, but stays with the woman. And he says, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Go in peace. 
I try to get my mind and heart around the range of emotions this woman must have been feeling before she turned that doorknob and opened the door. Like, you know who's in that room? I mean, you know the look. I mean, you can tell even in the Pharisee's thought to himself who and what sort of woman this is, right? I mean, if you move past the who and go to the what, she wouldn't, he wouldn't even let her touch him. Do you see the pervasive religious mood? This woman shouldn't even touch Jesus. She's defiling him by even being near him. This is the mindset. This is the religious mindset in the first century. What's this woman risking by coming into that? I mean, you know, by the law, they could just pelt her with rocks until she died. I mean, what's she thinking before she turns that doorknob, knowing that the majority of the room thinks she's less than human? There's a type of shame and a type of pain, and a type of difficulty that will weigh us, weigh so heavily upon us that we'll run to him and throw ourselves at his mercy. And the great thing in Scripture is anytime anyone's done that, Christ has extended freedom, mercy, grace, 